हेलो एंड वेलकम टू बायो स्टडी पाठशाला टुडे इज पार्ट फाइव ऑफ द इकोलॉजिकल साइंस वी हैव ऑलरेडी लर्न अबाउट बायोटिक फैक्टर्स अबायोटिक फैक्टर्स इन आवर इको सिस्टम ट्रॉपिक रिलेशनशिप सम रूल्स एंड लॉज रिगार्डिंग इन आवर इको सिस्टम एंड इकोलॉजिकल पिरामिड्स टूडेज टॉपिक्स आर ट्रांसफर एफिशेंसी ग्रॉस प्राइमरी प्रोडक्शन नेट प्राइमरी प्रोडक्शन एंड प्राइमरी प्रोडक्टिविटी मेजरमेंट सो टू लर्न अबाउट द ट्रांसफर एफिशियंसी वी शुड नो अबाउट द ट्रॉपिक लेवल रिलेशनशिप सो वी हैव लर्न दिस इन आर प्रीवियस क्लास सो दोज हु हैव नॉट वॉच those videos till now you can watch those videos and the link of the videos are given on the description box below so start what is the transfer efficiency here energy transfers from one tropic level to another that means in in its next tropic level as because the organisms are associated with each other in the tropic relationship as you can see in this diagram that from producer to herbivores to its next level that is primary carnivores to secondary carnivores and tertiary and so on so thus the energy transfers from the base to its apex and the energy transfer procedure is of mainly of three types this is consumption efficiency assimilation efficiency and the production efficiency so what is the consumption efficiency this measurement of the transfer efficiencies are measured in the percentile scale so if we think that about two tropic levels in our ecosystem one is n minus 1 and one is n so n feeds upon n minus 1 and ingested it and feeds upon the production of the n minus 1 tropic level so the consumption efficiency should be i n divided by production of n minus 1 level the percentage of this ratio is the consumption efficiency this efficiency value varies depending upon ecosystem as because of the food materials in terrestrial ecosystem herbivores show lowest consumption efficiency because the plant material are mainly woody part which is unconsumed by herbivores and varies from 1 to 2% in grassland this value ranges from 30 to 60% as because the plant parts are non woody maximum in case in case of aquatic ecosystem this efficiency shows almost 60 to 99% value as because the plant and algal biomass are consumed by the herbivores carnivores show maximum consumption efficiency that ranges from 5 to 100% as you can see in the slide as well so next is the assimilation efficiency assimilation efficiency can be measured within a single tropic level as because the assimilation part compared to its ingested part this ratio when multiplies with the 100 gives rise gives the result of the assimilation efficiency carnivores show maximum efficiency about 80% as because they consume largely on the soft tissue and which is very much easily assimilated into the blood stream whereas the herbivores show lowest assimilation efficiency which ranges from 5 to 20% among the herbivores aquatic herbivores show highest assimilation efficiency than the terrestrial herbivores as you can see in this slide also so next is the production efficiency that in tropic level after the assimilation how much 
they contribute to production of the new biomass the percentage of this production is known as the production efficiency that means the production of the new biomass of the entropic level divided by its assimilation efficiency assimilation when it is multiplied by 100 it is known as the production efficiency and invertebrates and the microorganism show highest production efficiency in, in it ranges for invertebrates about 10 to 50 percent vertebrates show lower production efficiency than the invertebrates among in the invertebrates sorry among in the vertebrates poikilothons show almost 10% of the production efficiency whereas the homeotherms show only 1 to 2% of the production efficiency as because they need more energy to maintain their body temperature in a constant way. So this is the slide you can see some homeotherms, some poikilotherms, some invertebrates. So the summary is this the consumption efficiency is the cumulative value of the assimilation efficiency and the waste product and the assimilation efficiency is the cumulative value of the production efficiency and the respiration herbivores have a tendency to show higher production efficiency and lower assimilation efficiency than the carnivores that means production efficiency in case of herbivore herbivores show highest herbivores is greater than carnivores whereas the assimilation efficiency is herbivores show lower value than the carnivores it is the gross production efficiency which is the product value of the assimilation efficiency and the production efficiency sorry this is the assimilation efficiency and this is the production efficiency and this is the result which is the measurement of the gross production efficiency it is it states how this works like the production the biomass from the n minus 1 tropic level transfers to its next tropic level that is n tropic level by the consumption procedure and it is assimilated as well in the n tropic level and the production of the new biomass occurs in the n tropic level the waste product from the n minus 1 tropic level and from the n tropic level which is feeded by the detritivores as well so next is tropic level transfer efficiency this is the product value of the three energy efficiencies these are the consumption efficiency assimilation efficiency and the production efficiency and it follows the Lindemann's 10 percent law the changes of these three efficiency can affect the tropic level transfer efficiency and it is calculated by this formula tropic level transfer efficiency is the total amount of the energy which transfers from one tropic level to its next tropic level and incorporated into the new biomass generation scientist daniel Pauli and willy christensen surveyed by 49 studies in 1995 and found that the trophic level transfer efficiency appears around 10 percent in case of marine food chain this value can exceed up to 30 percent as well so next is the ecological productivity productivity means the generation of the new biomass in our ecosystem Autotrophs productivity is known as the primary productivity whereas the heterotrophs productivity known as the secondary productivity. Autotrophs perform photosynthesis and the photosynthetic product is known as the primary productivity and the produ um, production of the heterotrophs and the decomposers are far less energetic than the primary productivity. Primary productivity may decline in the dry winter time. What is the gross primary productivity? Gross primary productivity is equivalent to the carbon fixation in the photosynthesis at a certain time. And the efficiency of the gross primary production can be calculated by the energy produced 
by the GPP or in the time of the photosynthesis compared to its the energy available by the incident light or the solar radiation. The percentile of this ratio is the efficiency of the GPP. Desert ecosystem show low GPP efficiency as because water act as the limiting factor in this ecosystem and in the aquatic ecosystem GPP also low efficiency GPP also low efficient as because the nutrient act as the limiting factors only in case of the herbaceous plants and deciduous plant forest the efficiency of the GPP is moderate and in case of the coniferous forest it is highest GPP efficiency because of the needle like leaves they can perceive the maximum sunlight or the incident light. Next is the net primary production. Net primary production is the differences between the gross primary production and the energy which is utilized in the time of the respiration. In aquatic ecosystem the NPP might be regulated by light and nutrients availability. Whereas in the terrestrial ecosystem, it is regulated by light, water and nutrients. NPP is highest in case of tropical forest as because the precipitation is maximum there. But it also declines at the extremely high precipitation level because of the loss of the nutrients through leaching at the low oxygen level in the soil. In terrestrial ecosystem, NPP decreases from the tropical regions to the polar regions as because the light and temperature limitations and these limiting factors varies latitudinally because of the plant community, solar radiation, temperature and so on. Tropical rainforest show less variation in NPP production as because in tropical rainforest there is less variation in temperature and weather. Open ocean system in earth present highest NPP production than any other ecosystem as because it is the largest area in our earth but the NPP per unit area value in case of the open ocean system is the smallest one. Coral reef and the estuaries have also role in the NPP production. It is almost high but their contribution is so small because of their small sizes. As you can see this is a pie diagram of the NPP in various ecosystem in our earth and it is the NPP per unit area that is the unit of this is gram per meter square per year it is this ecosystem shows this kind of data so comparison between the ecosystem on the basis of the productivity as shown below that npp is highest in ocean after that tropical temperate and desert desert show lowest NPP but when the NPP and per area ratio is observed then the tropical rainforest show the highest NPP per area and desert show lowest NPP per area and NPP per leaf area this value sh shows highest in case of desert as because desert plants have the lowest leaf area so the NPP per leaf area value is highest in case of desert ecosystem and NPP per biomass is highest in case of ocean because phytoplankton have role in the oceanic ecosystem in the primary productivity and the phytoplankton are so less in weight that the cumulative value of the phytoplankton in the open ocean are so less than any other ecosystem. So next is the primary productivity measurement in aquatic ecosystem mainly. It is also known as the light and dark bottle method and also oxygen emission method. In this measurement procedure, two glass bottles are taken. One bottle is wrapped by foil that as because light cannot penetrate within this bottle 
and water sample from the benthic zone of a pond ecosystem are collected within two se um, bottles separately and sealed those two bottles and these two bottles are kept at a depth of the pond from where the samples are collected after one hour this data again re-examined you can correct this it uh, after one hour should not be here it is here so after one hour when it is examined it shows that L has maximum oxygen concentration from the initial value and D has less oxygen concentration from the initial value if we think that initial oxygen concentration is 7 mg per liter and after one hour the L bottle show the oxygen concentration is about to 12 mg per liter while the dark bottle show 5 mg per liter that means the GPP is about to 12 minus 5 equals to 7 as because L shows the GPP plus R that means respiration in the light bottle the photosynthesis and respiration happen simultaneously but in dark bottle there is no photosynthesis only respiration occurs so if we want to find out the GPP then L minus D would give the result of the GPP and if we want to calculate the NPP on this data then we should difference minus the initial value from the light bottle and it would give the net primary production respiration value would be we can get from initial value minus the dark bottle as because the in the initial bottle there was some oxygen amount but in dark bottle after one hour there was that much oxygen left after the respiration so how much oxygen was utilized in the respiration procedure can be measured by this process which will be the 2 mg per liter in the dark bottle as there was no photosynthesis but respiration taken place so the oxygen concentration decreased and in the light bottle concentration was increased because of the photosynthesis takes place within this so this is for today's session and if you like this video and it is helpful for you then please share and subscribe my channel and the telegram link also be given on the description box below you can join on this channel too so thank you